Welcome to this section using Socket.io and Express, part of the series Build Complex Express Sites with Redis and Socket.io. In this, the final section, we will cover the most complex topics. In this section, we will look at sharing state between Express and Socket.io, then the problem with routes, and using Redis to share connections between servers, and finally, sending messages to Socket.io clients from outside the Socket.io server. Now in this specific video, we will be discussing how to share state between Socket.io and Express. We will do this by looking at using Express and Socket.io together, and then Socket.io middleware, and finally, we will cover sessions in Socket.io. So let's go ahead and get started. In the previous sections, we have technically been using Express and Socket.io together, but there was no real integration. Express was just a server serving the HTML pages. We could have used the built-in Node.js HTTP server and nothing would have been different. Now in this video, we will be going more in depth about the integration of Express and Socket.io. What we will focus on here is sharing state between Express and Socket.io. Now we technically have two separate frameworks running on the same platform, Express and Socket.io on Node.js. Now, just because they're both on Node.js does not mean that they can just share information. We actually have to take a step to do this. Now, that step is using sessions. Sessions are what we use to store information between HTTP requests. Now, WebSockets are not exactly an HTTP request, but they are in the same spot. If we need information about the person's connection, we will need to get it from a session. Now, to do this, we use Socket IO middleware. This middleware works very much like Express middleware. It will take the socket and the next function. And in addition to that, we also use the function use to call it. So just like Express middleware, we can do whatever we want for every socket IO request. Now that doesn't mean every event, but every connection. And then when we are done, we can either deny that connection or we can call next to continue on with it. Again, this is very similar to Express, except Express middleware has three parameters that are passed in. The request, the response, and next. In Socket.io, it's just going to be the socket and next. So let's go ahead and look at some code to make this work. First, we'll look at the package.json. And here, we have Express and Socket.io. In addition to this, we have Express Session. Now this is a middleware that will allow us to add a session object to the request. Now we have used this before with Express, and we're going to actually make it work with Socket.io. So now let's look at index.js and see how this works. Now this has a similar boilerplate to pretty much all the other code we've built so far. With the exception is we now have this session that we're using Express session. So then we set everything up how we expect, and then we're creating the session middleware. Now this will return a function that can be plugged right into Express, which is what we do here. So we say app use the session middleware. That function will take the three parameters, the request, the response, and next. Now, because this is going to pass in three parameters, we don't have to define it, it'll just happen. Then. We're going to run here and we're going to say, take that session and get the name out and then just output it here. And then finally we use static. Now that brings us to the socket IO middleware. So here we can see that it takes socket and next. So when we call the session middleware, because we want to use the same middleware, because it'll connect to the same sessions, we're going to run socket.request and we're going to pass in a blank response object. Again, remember this takes three parameters where we only passed in two. So we're going to map a blank and then we're going to call next. So we are also using the socket.request. Now this request object is very similar to an express request object as the initial WebSocket request is actually an HTTP request. So this should work exactly how we're expecting like it would with express. 
the session object will be added to this request object. So now we actually have the code that's going to run on the connection for Socket IO. So this is going to be very similar to a lot of the code that we've done before. We're coming in, we're going to have a name, and we're going to broadcast that out. And on connection, we're going to see if that name is set, and then we're going to emit it back to the client, and then we're going to emit out that that person has joined. And we can do that because we have the name. And then here, every time someone goes to say hello, we're going to pull in that name, and then we're going to save it in the session, and then emit that event. So as we can see, we're going to use, so now let's look at the front end. So here's the index. So as we can see, we have this input for the name and we have a button to say hello. And we have a list so that we can see all the things that are happening. Now we connect to socket IO and then here we're going to emit the name. So when you say, when you click the button, say hello, we will send the name back. And then we have this add li based on a message that comes in, it'll be added to the list. And then on that event, we're going to run add li. Now we have one addition, we have this name. And remember, from the server side, that this is going to be emitted when it's in the session. So if we get a name, we're actually going to get the input right here, and we're going to set the value to that name. So if we've been here before and we've said hello and we come back, it'll actually remember who we are and set our name. And one thing to remember as well is that right here, this is kind of showing how if someone was authorized, that we can actually see their name in Express, and we also can see that name or username in Socket IO. So we can actually have these work together. So let's actually kick this off and see it in action. Okay, so here's the site. So as you can see, this is pretty basic. So I'm going to put Josh, and I'm going to put say hello. Now again, remember, when we say hello, this sends to everyone else. So as we click it, we don't actually see anything here. Now I'm going to log into another and say hello back, so we can see that th these are going back and forth. So what I'm going to do now is refresh the page. So let's say we left and we come back. And then this should remember who I am, set my name in here, and then tell me, there we go, that I have joined. Now, we know that we have joined because we have that session that says this is my name. So when I reconnected, it saw that I had a session, then said my name was Josh, and then sent that out to everyone, and then also sent it here to put this in. So let's say that I change my name. So I can change it here. And then if I refresh, that's going to update my name in the session. Okay, so as we can see, we are actually sharing that state between both Express and Socket IO. So in this video, we have started to pull Express and Socket IO together. We have shown how to take session information and share it between Express and Socket IO. At this point, we can have someone log into the site using Express, and then every time they connect using Socket.io, we will know who they are. In the next video, we will talk about one problem that arises when using Socket.io and Express together. It can cause problems, but knowing what it is and what to do about it is very useful.